And how did the truck come out? Because another truck got here. It's like the car. Tech from space exploration has had great use on Earth, like Velcro. So maybe thinking about space colonies can help us build better and faster homes on Earth. We've seen Bucky Fuller's grand ideas, and we've seen 3D printed homes from Earth. But even if we managed to print our homes from lunar or Martian dirt, how challenging would it be to live on the moon or Mars? You could modify it for hydroponics, aquaponics, rooftops, underground, whatever you want, really. Could be the moon? Yeah. And you can see the half already. <laughs> oh, yeah. So how often do you take this drive? Oh, uh, a few times a, a month, I yeah. think. So there are two missions a month. So how old is this lava? Do you know more or less when it blew? Very, it depends which flow. There are flows that are very old. There are flows that are just so the most recent one is only since December. So already it looks kind of Mars-like, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, and that's the reason why they chose this site to build the app. Here it is. You have a whole system going on. We, you know, when we talk about living off the grid on Earth, that's one thing. You are doing an, another step. Is it like living off grid in another planet, basically, or? Yeah, it's a working system. So these are the two water tanks. So what is very similar to the moon is that the water is very limited. That's a sensor to see, to check the water level that we can do it from inside. And normally you bring enough, what would be enough to take a few showers? What's well, yeah. we, because we only have short missions. How long? Uh, so we have one week missions and okay. two week missions. Okay. So during a one week mission, people are not allowed to take a shower. We have wet wipes like it is in space. Mm -hmm. And during a two-week mission, they have they can take one shower in the middle of the mission. Okay. So we mainly use water to wash our hands, brush our teeth, cooking, those things. Okay. So this is a wastewater tank. Okay. And also everything runs on solar panels. Mm -hmm. And we have four batteries. And that's more than sufficient for what we use it for. Yeah. So most of the time, we never go below 50%. Why don't? Why a dome? Because yeah. of the pressure. Because inside the pressure would be much higher. So then the dome is an ideal shape. For keeping it pressurized? Yes. Inside. So we have a simulated airlock. We don't have a real airlock. So please remove shoes. That the lunar dust stays out there. This is the airlock. So normally we only go in and out with pressurizing and depressurizing. Okay. Yeah. So now we are at HAP. So, this is the habitat. I will turn on some lights. This is actually surprisingly large. Yeah, and everybody says like from the outside it looks smaller. Yeah. And then when they come inside, it's like, oh, it's bigger inside than from the outside. Yeah. So this is the common area. So there are six different desks because we can have crews of maximum six people here. So this space is also used to do yoga, to have sports time. Because what could happen? If there is like, for example, an ISS, when there's no gravity, then they have degradation of their muscles and their bones. And on the moon, you still have some gravity. You have one sixth gravity of Earth gravity, or you have one third on Mars, but it's still much less than we have here on Earth. <laughs> So it's necessary that they would have a lot of exercise as well on the moon or on Mars to keep their muscle and bone mass. This is the dining area. We also we use it for briefing. So then, for example, the schedule so on projected on the screen. And this is our kitchen. So our diet is with freeze-dried food, freeze-dried and dehydrated food. So here you can see the different vegetables. 
this thing. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to try, feel free. This is how it oh, looks wow. like. <laughs> it looks like horse food or something. <laughs> How does it taste? Hmm. Well, <laughs> do you spice it? <laughs> actually, no, it has a little spice to it. It actually tastes like a spice. Diced bell peppers. That's another okay. odd one. <laughs> okay, let's see. <laughs> so we try to simulate as much as we can. Of course, there are plenty of things you can't simulate. Water, so we see here, so water, that's what we saw outside. So this is the water yes. coming in. So this is filtered water and this is extra filtered water. So this is what we drink. So what we mainly do is we use a dishwasher, but we catch the water. So because the water is coming out here again, okay. and then we use that water again to pre-rinse or for cleaning. So in most other habitats, they have one big bedroom. Here, every person ha has a single bedroom. So we have six identical bedrooms. So there is a single bed, a tiny desk, small cupboard. So it's very cozy. <laughs> it is cozy. So if you, can you sit on the bed or do you yes. hit your head? Yeah. I okay. Can. So it gives I'm, you space. I'm not at all, but for tall people, it's more challenging. But... How, much, how much time are you spending in here? Not that much time. So during the night, obviously, and then people have about one hour exactly. free time. Yeah. It's very small, but somehow you have the little tiny space where you don't see people for at least a short amount of time. Small, but you're in the top of the dome, so you're getting an angled roof next to you. Yeah. I mean, it's so what happens a lot when people are laying in their bed is that they like hit their arms okay. <laughs> and then everybody can hear it. Yeah. So if I just lay like that, but then if you're like rolling over, that's what happens so many times and then you hear it in the whole dome. <laughs> That's funny. So you've actually been on a lot of missions. I mean, yes. how long have you been here? Since March. Okay. So, so um, like so eight I've... months or so. Yeah, I did yeah. about like six missions. Does it get easier or harder? Well, it, dep it really depends from crew to crew mainly. <laughs> Is there ever a moment where you're all sitting in your rooms? And I guess when you're sleeping, right? Because yeah, <laughs> yeah. when everyone's up here, it's, it's pretty tight quarters. Too. Yes. We have two bathrooms, one up here. So because we have limited water supply, we use compost toilets. So it's just a normal toilet. And then instead of flushing, we use sawdust. So, and it's all explained. So you have three scoops of sawdust, two sprays of the compost quick spray, and then one clockwise stir. So this is just taking this handle out and turning it all the way. So that's how it works. And then at the end of the mission, we have to empty it. Is yeah. there a shower in heat shower is probably it's downstairs, yeah. So this is the downstairs bathroom. These kind of compost toilets are normally made for a family of three people. So for that reason we have two. And then there's also a urinal and a shower. So the shower, this is for if you get a weekly shower. And then it makes sense to have a urinal. Like, is it more efficient, yes. right? Probably. It's, it's also because in the compost toilets we can't have too much liquids. So for that reason, we have a, okay. a urinal. But just for the males, or do they expect the women to do it as well? Well, it depends how many women there are on the mission. Uh -huh. And then the last room, the lab, the last room in here in the dome. This is used for the scientists, so they can do their experiments here. And also the aquaponic system. So here we have kind of wool, and this is volcanic rock, so they test what plants do better. So there are timers, so when it's night, then the lights go out. And then they get water, also very timed, to maximize their growing. You just planted these like... Two weeks ago, like radish is doing very well. With the wool. And it, it's, they did many studies on that, so some fresh vegetables really help for the morale of the crews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we have one more thing, the engineering bay. So this is the airlock. And here, these are the four batteries. And that's normal days more than enough. So most of the time we don't go below 50%. Really? You get enough power? Yeah. To run everything? To run everything. And if it gets cloudy several days, then we go below that. But then we still have the backup generator. Right. Which is outside. not very lunar. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have some more equipment here. For example, if something is broken, we're on the moon. So you can't just call anybody to come fix it. So we have to try to do it ourselves. We have mission control as a support, so they can give us directions, but we have to do it on our own.
So we have all the different things that we can check one by one, all the different sensors and so on. So the battery state is now is 100%, so the state of charge. Because it's been such a warm day. Uh, sunny, yeah, it's, it's most of the time when it's not super cloudy, it goes up to 100%. Okay. Um, so then our water state, so we are at 28%. Then the CO2 level, and this is the temperature. We can also change the temperature here if you want to have it warmer or colder. You will hear that the heating will start. Can you hear it? Yeah. So these backpacks simulate our oxygen. And in the helmets, we have built-in uh, communication systems. So And also, this battery powers the communication system. But you just press it on. You can lower the temperature if you want. or. Oh. Put on the fan more if you want. These are the suits we use. So a suit, backpack, helmet, gloves, knee pads and hiking boots. And that's how we go out. So in a mission, we are only allowed to go outside with full equipment, like it would be on the moon. <laughs> Look for some better lava. <laughs> this is uh, not the best way. It's been uh, some time since I've been here, so I don't remember the exact best way. I can't believe you actually know roots through this. It all looks the same to me. <laughs> I just have some recognize, like some points of reference. But the rest does look all the same, honestly. <laughs> this is it. So you have a much better view from the other side. Be careful to, not to go too close. This part did crumble. Yeah. So yeah, if you look from here, so here you can really look inside the lava tube. I, I don't even know what a lava tube is. What is a lava tube? So a lava tube, actually it's lava that flows in the other side get solidified much faster than the inside. So it's really like a tunnel of lava. So you can really, so it's really kind of tunnel where you can go down pretty deep, actually. And it's nice because many lava tubes are connected and then some of the parts, so for example, this is a skylight and this part just collapsed. So that's the reason we can go in here. Some are more easy to get in than others. <laughs> but, but why would you get in a lava tube? It depends on people, take samples or uh -huh. do experiments in there. And also it's just very interesting to explore. So Would the moon have kind of a yeah, lava tube? Yeah, they have lava they tubes. Have, oh, cool. And they are more, they are bigger because of the gravity. So you think this is going to happen somewhere else, the moon or Mars, like in another planet within your generation or the next? I think we will go there, yes. I do think so. Do you want to go? To the moon? Yeah, I would love to go to the moon. It will never happen. Yeah, because I, there's multi, multi of reasons why not, but I also have some medical issues, so that, that won't be. A possibility anyway but i would love to yeah so yeah it's always an adventure being out here <laughs>